This is the first section of the probability generating functions chapter and this section is probability generating functions. We might want to call them a PGF um, for shorthand just to save a bit of time as we're talking. Now what is a probability generating function? Well it's a function that displays um, the outcomes and probabilities of a discrete random variable. So I'll write that down. A PGF probability generating function is a function that displays outcomes and the probability of those outcomes of those outcomes yeah and this is for uh, discrete random variables so here's an example um, let's say we've got a probability distribution so remember this is like a table where I've got uh, some outcomes at the top so my outcomes are going to be 0 1 2 3 and 4 at the bottom, I'm going to put my uh, probabilities um, of each one of those outcomes. So let's say that we have um, one eighth, two eighths, so that makes three eighths. Um, three eighths, let's do another eighth there. So that's four eighths. Let's do um, another three here. So that's now seven eighths and then one more. Okay, so that adds up to one, those probabilities. If I were to display this as a probability generating function, I want you to look at this. So the notation for probability generating function is G of X and the letter T. And T is something called a dummy variable. Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. Dummy basically means it doesn't do anything. But we'll talk about um, that a bit more. So the way it's written is you write the probability of the outcome for zero and that's times by t to the power zero. So can you see here we've got the probability when x equals zero and here this is telling us that x equals zero. So the top, the power of t is the outcome, the uh, number in front of t is the probability of that outcome. So if we carry on, so the next probability is two eighths, and that's the probability of one, yeah? Then one eighth, probability of two, three eighths, probability of three, and then one eighth, the probability of four. So each one of these powers at the top here is the outcome. Yeah, zero, one, two, three, four. Um, the numbers in front of T, okay, these are the probabilities of each of those outcomes. But T itself doesn't do anything. Yeah, we don't substitute in different values of T to get the probabilities. So that's why it's called a dummy variable. T is just like there like you know to link the probabilities and the outcomes but it doesn't actually do anything but um, there is one thing it does and that's this when t is 1 then the expression always equals 1 so basically if we substitute 1 if we substitute t equals 1 into our expression we will get one. Now, why does that happen? Why is it that when you put one in, you get one out? Well, if all of these t's become ones, yeah, so um, one to any power is still one. So effectively, what I'm doing is multiplying each of these highlighted probabilities in green. I'm multiplying them by one. So what am I doing? I'm just adding basically all the probabilities and they should add up to one. So that's really useful 
that when t is 1, the sum of the probabilities is 1. Now, what you'll also see later on is that uh, another use for probability generating function is that if we differentiate a probability generating function, it allows us to find the expected value e of x and the variance of x. So that's another use for a probability generating function. So first of all, it displays probabilities in their outcomes. And later on, what we'll see is when we differentiate a probability generating function, it will allow us to uh, work out e of x and var x. Okay, so here x is a discrete random variable that this denotes the absolute difference. So the absolute difference is basically um, the positive difference between the numbers. I suppose another way of thinking of it is that it's the modulus of the difference uh, of the scores when two fair dice are thrown. Construct a probability distribution, so that's when we have the table with x and a probability of x. And then write down the probability generating function, so the PGF. Um, and that's that what we did before g x t equals and then we write down the probabilities next to t to the power zero t to the power one and so on so the first thing we're going to do is uh, construct a sample space diagram to work out what these absolute differences are okay so this is going to be dice number one here dice number two one two three four five six and then what we'll do is we'll fill in the absolute differences. So we always want to do the bigger number minus the smaller one. Or if we don't, we don't put any negatives in this table and they need to be positives. So these are all going to be zeros along here. Because there's no difference between them. Then along the top, um, these numbers have a difference of 1, 2 and 1, then 2, 4, 5. Next row, there's a difference of 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So, yeah, we can use patterns here to fill this in uh, really quickly. Just look at the number uh, above. Uh, what you need to be careful of, though, is, whoops, uh, as I say, be careful, I make a mistake. Uh, what we need to be careful of is that we don't put any uh, negatives in this table. And there we go, it's done. So now we can do the probability distribution. So the top row of my table is going to have the outcomes, which are these absolute differences, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then the bottom row of my table is going to have the probability of each of those absolute differences. So these are going to be out of 36 because there's 36 outcomes. So I'll just write down they're all going to be out of 36. I'm not going to simplify them just yet. I'm, I may do that later on. We'll see. Now, how many zeros do we have? Let's highlight them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would be 6 out of 36. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, ones. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. So it's going to be 10 over 36. Then the number of twos. What colour should we go for now? Uh, light blue. Mm, probably not a good idea on blue. Um, yellow. Let's go for a yellow highlighter. Number two is one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, can I use a pattern yet? Maybe. Maybe not a good idea because I uh, don't want to get the wrong number. Right, so next one. The number of threes. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. I probably don't need to highlight the rest. I can count them. Number of fours, there's four. Number of fives is two. And probably as a quick check, I might wanna check that these numbers at the top add up to 36. So six plus 10, 16, plus eight, uh, 24, then plus six, 30. Yep, they add up to 36. So I can be pretty confident I've got them right. Right, so now we can write out the probability generating function. So GX with T in brackets. And then what we do, we just write each one of those probabilities in front of different powers of T. So six over 36, T to the power zero, plus 10 over 36, T to the power one, plus eight over 36, T squared, plus six over 36, T cubed plus four over 36, T to the power four plus two over 36, T to the power five. So there's no reason I couldn't leave it like that. I could simplify them and then put a common factor outside. So this becomes, uh, if we divide by uh, six, well, actually, let's make them all. So actually, let's do them 1 over 18 and get the same denominator, 2 over 18. Otherwise, I'm going to have to find a common factor. It's going to be tricky. So 4 over 18. They're all going to be over 18. That's a common factor. So I can take that out as a factor 1 over 18. So, yeah, I could now write this as... Uh, 1 over 18 and then um, 3 t to the power 0 or just 3 plus 5 t1 power 1 4 t squared 3 t cubed 2 t 4 and 1 t 5 or just t to the power of five. So there we go. That's the uh, probability generating function for um, this uh, discrete random variable. Okay, the probability generating function of the discrete random variable x is given by that little expression formula here. Here we go. Find the value of k. Well, what do we know about probability generating functions? Well, we know that when we put um, one in here, we get a value answer of one. When we substitute t for one, then the whole expression gives us one. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, gx of one, that's going to be um, k and then one plus one, so you substitute t for one squared, we know that that equals uh, one. So all we need to do now is to solve that. So um, in the brackets is two. So you basically get four k equals one, k equals a quarter, easy. So we found the value of k, which is one quarter, and then B, write down the probability distribution of um, X. So that means do the table. So to get the table, we want to expand this probability generating function. So GXT, now K was a quarter. So that means it's now a quarter, one plus T all squared. So what we're going to do is expand the brackets um, and that will give us a quarter and we will get, if you expand the brackets, t squared plus 2t plus 1. Okay, so we're almost there now. Um, gx of t is going to be, and we're going to write them in ascending order of powers. That's how we normally write our uh, probability generating function. So a quarter, you could say t to the power zero, which is a quarter, plus 
So we're going to do 2 times a quarter, so that's a half, so half t to the power 1. And then plus a quarter t squared. So all we need to do from that is now put it in the table. So we will have our outcomes and the probability of those outcomes. So the outcomes, remember these are the powers of t, so 0, 1, and 2, easy. And then what we'll do underneath is the probability, so they're just the coefficient of each of the t's, so a quarter, a half, a quarter. So there we go, we found the probability distribution of x, this discrete random variable. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 7a on pages 130 to 131. So just as a quick recap, our probability uh, generating function, uh, what we have is the uh, coefficients of each of these different powers of t. So I'll put plus, I'll just put like little boxes for now like this and obviously it sort of carries on the numbers that are going to be in these boxes here so this is the probability when x is zero that's that coefficient this is the probability when x equals one this is the probability when x equals two and so on and the other thing that we need to know about probability generating functions to help us solve problems um, when we have um, t equal to 1, it equals 1, okay? So when t equals 1, uh, gx equals 1. That's going to help us solve problems.